This build series is brought to you by Apex Cases and Seagate. Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com and this is part 9 of my PC build series and we're finally going to be hackintoshing this thing. So the first thing we need to do is make a partition on our existing drive. So using disk management, you just have to go to start run diskmgmt.msc, hit enter. Now we're just going to shrink our main partition by 64 gigabytes. So this is plenty for Mac OS X. I don't plan on doing anything extensive with it anyway. I just wanna see how far I could get it to work. So a 60 gigabyte partition, which is exactly 61,440 megabytes. Now this process shouldn't take more than a couple seconds to go ahead and shrink your partition. Now we just need to right click on our unallocated space, go to next, go to next again, Give it a drive loader, I'll give it M. It doesn't really matter anyway, since Windows will not be able to read it after we get Mac OS X installed. And we're just going to name it ML, which will come in handy later on in the installation process. Now it is actually formatting it and making it a physical partition. So here it is, the empty partition, as you can see right there in the My Computer window. So that's done. All we have to do now is go ahead and reboot into the OS X installer. Now I am using a Mac OS 10.8.0 USB flash drive. I made it using a legitimate retail copy of Mountain Lion from the Mac App Store. I used Unibeast to go ahead and create it. Right now I am booting from the flash drive as you can see. Typically with my experience, which is involving five plus years of hackintoshing ever since Mac OS 10.4 Tiger, you, I would typically boot with TAC-V, which is dash V for those who don't understand what TAC is. And this boots in verbose mode, which allows us to see line by line the boot process. So if anything were to stall, we can see where it stalled and where the issue might be. If you happen to get a kernel panic, this is also useful because we can narrow down which file is causing the issue. So right now it's just going through the boot process and in a matter of seconds, we will end up at the Mac OS X installer or rather not. So what it's doing right now is it's loading all of the kext files which are kernel extensions and basically you can consider these as drivers. It's basically software that works in hand with your hardware to make sure that everything runs properly. So it was basically loading all of those files into a cache. It doesn't do this on every boot because as you can tell it takes quite a while. You typically need to do this whenever you are getting your Hackintosh set up, dealing with drivers, and afterwards it would just load the cache instead of having to load each file individually. So here we are at the OS X installer. If you want to install Mac OS X in a different language, you could choose your language here. So my USB mouse and keyboard work just fine. So we're gonna go to Utilities, Disk Utility, click on our ML partition that we labeled earlier, go to Erase, make sure the format is Mac OS X Extended Journal, click on Erase twice, and in a couple of seconds it will go ahead and format the partition. Now we could go click on Continue, agree to the user agreement, which nobody ever reads, so it's pretty useless. There are no customization options because this is not a custom Mac OS X distro. Mm -hmm. And right now it's installing, it's gonna take a little while. So I will go ahead and skip the process and come back when it's finished. So it took nearly 15 minutes for all of the files to copy where they needed to go. This is from a USB 2.0 flash drive. So now that it is finished, we could go ahead and click on the restart button, if I would go ahead and do it. As you can tell, I'm doing a voiceover right now, so I'm just waiting for the video to get to where I went ahead and moved the cursor and clicked on the restart button. There we go. So the restart was very quick, and now we can go ahead and boot into Mac OS X. So the computer is just now turning back on. I just pushed the power button, as you can tell from the little bit of reflection from the screen. Here we have the little splash screen. Now we're going to actually go from the USB drive again, and now, you, as you can see, we have an ML partition. This is the actual installation that we installed Mountain Lion 2. So I ran it with dash V again, so I could boot into verbose mode, and this is the first boot, keep in mind, for this installation. Now, before we actually get all of our necessary drivers installed with MultiBeast, the first boot and boot processes after that, after that are actually going to take quite a while. That's because the proper drivers to utilize the hardware is not installed, so it makes the boot process hang a little bit. So I'll be showing you the actual process to get all of this fixed in a little moment. So here we are, it's just reloading all the kext files that I showed you earlier, so it just finished. Now it is actually booting my installation. Now at one point, we will see a line where it says that Bluetooth has 
waited 30 seconds for something to complete but for whatever reason that shouldn't be happening technically so we are currently just waiting for it to finish the boot process i would go ahead and skip ahead but i think that some of you guys might be interested in actually seeing this happen so waiting a little bit more and it takes about 45 seconds i think if i remember correctly seems to be taking a little bit longer actually so still waiting for it to go ahead and complete the first boot now a little bit of a spoiler spoiler actually when everything is said and done when all the drivers are set up and whatnot it actually boots up very quickly so within 10 to 15 seconds of hitting enter at the boot screen so also post installation everything seems to work both Ethernet ports are detected, Bluetooth works, audio works perfectly as well, including the front panel audio, rear audio, all the mic inputs, and everything like that works just fine. So here we are at the welcome screen. So if you live in an area other than the United States, you could go ahead and choose your country, choose your keyboard. I do not have Ethernet, an, an Ethernet cable plugged in, so I don't need to go there yet. Now we have the create your computer account, so you just have to fill in your account name, your typical things, your password. I went ahead and skipped the password hint since I don't really think it's necessary for me at least. Choose your time zone and that is it. So once you click on start using your Mac, you are now at your desktop. So as you can see, the resolution is low. It is 1024 by 768, but you can see that our processor is detected, our RAM is detected, and it detects four memory slots, but we actually only have two on the motherboard. So here, we, here I am going through some of the system information pages. You can see that audio is currently not working. Don't worry, we will fix this later. The graphics card is not properly being utilized as well, although USB 3.0 works. Our serial ATA port works, as you can see. In a couple of seconds, I will go ahead and hit or excuse me, right there, it says that we do have full six gigabit per second speeds. Mm -hmm. And that is it with this part. Now, the next step includes updating to the latest version of Mac OS X, which is 10.8.2. So on my flash drive, I have all of the files that I need to, go to get everything working. I have multi-beast. I also have the Mac OS X combo, and I also have a DSDT file. Now this is a little set of pre-made hardware instructions for your computer, and this is necessary if you want to use Mac OS X and use the HDMI output on the rear of the motherboard, and also get the audio output through that same connection. So that's why we need this. If you don't care about HDMI audio, then you don't need this at all. So here I am installing Mac OS 10.8.2, the combo update. So this is going to take about five minutes or so, and I'm going to go ahead and skip it and then come back. And now the 10.8.2 update has been completed. Now, before we restart, we need to go ahead and install all of our drivers so that once we, or excuse me, once we actually boot up, everything will be working normally as you would expect it to. So because of the new security features in 10.8, I need to allow downloaded applications from anywhere to open up. So here we have MultiBeast. It's a nice set of pre-made packages for drivers, installation things, just stuff to make your Hackintosh work the way it should. So we need to go to Drivers Audio, ALC 890, whatever. Go to with DSDT, because as I mentioned earlier, we do have that file. I just needed to choose ALC 892, which is the audio codec that this particular motherboard happens to use. And I also choose 1080p display so that when we are at the boot screen, when all the, all the text is flying by and when we see the Apple logo, it'll actually fill up the full resolution of my display, which is 1920 by 1080. As you can see, the installation was successful. All we have to do now is restart the machine. And actually, Mac OS X froze, so I had to do a hard reboot, as you can see right here. Fortunately, this didn't cause any issues, so I went ahead and did the hard reboot. There's the splash screen for the motherboard. We're going to go ahead and choose the USB flash drive yet again. Okay, well, as you saw, I just chose the actual hard drive and it gave me a boot zero error, which means that the bootloader that was installed from the MultiBeast did not work properly, but there is a good fix for that, which I will show you 
Actually, no, I will not show you because I did it off camera, but it's a very simple fix. I will link it down below in the written post for the entire build. So if you happen to be doing the same exact build yourself, you should be able to just follow my videos, follow the instructions in the written post, and you should be good to go. So this is the first boot after installing the 10.8.2 combo update. And as I mentioned earlier, when you're dealing with updates and driver installations, you wanna make sure that you reload all of your kext files, which is obviously what it's doing right now. And to reiterate, it's basically loading all of our kernel extension files into a cache so that later on when we have to boot Mac OS X, it just loads that single cache file instead of having to do each file individually, which is what it's doing now. So that process just finished and you can see that finally all the text is properly fitting the 1920 by 1080 monitor. Now as you noticed on the first re on the uh, first boot after Mac OS X was actually installed, it hung at one of the areas. So this time it is not going to hang anywhere. But keep in mind that since this is the first boot after installing a major OS X update, it will take a little bit longer than normal. Now I will show you Mac OS X booting normally towards the end of this video and it's much faster than you see here. The Apple logo also as you see here would not be there later on so it's just the typical stuff after installing an update. So here we are at the desktop we have full resolution we have full hardware acceleration from the HD 4000 integrated GPU for the Core i3-3225 you can see that we do have a transparent Tat or menu bar at the top that's probably the initial primary indicator that indicates that you have hardware acceleration from your video card so we are on 10.8.2 it is utilizing 1920 by 1080 pixels on my monitor here we have some bluetooth information so as i mentioned earlier the bluetooth card that's built onto the motherboard works just fine here is some of our graphics information of course usb 3.0 continues to work fine up to 5 gigabits per second of course and here you can see that both of our ethernet ports are detected and ready for use. And here I went to the display tab and there's frankly not too much to show you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the actual process you need to take to get between Windows 8 and Mac OS X. So switching between both operating systems is simple. All you have to do is press F12 to go up to the boot selection menu and from there you'll be able to choose the operating system that you would like to boot. So if you would like to go into Windows, you have to select Windows Boot Manager. And for this video, I'm just gonna show you the quick boot, or excuse me, I went to this instead. So you can use this typically to boot Windows, but since we're doing an EFI installation, it throws us this error. So you have to restart, and you cannot go to the actual hard drive to boot Windows. You could only use that for Mac OS X. So once again, for Windows, just choose Windows Boot Manager, and it will go ahead and boot up your, uh, your EFI installation of Windows 8. As you can see, it's very quick. And we're going to go ahead and restart Windows real quick, and I'll go ahead and show you the final Mac OS X boot process. And as I mentioned earlier, the initial boot processes after getting the drivers installed and Mac OS X updated, they're fairly slow. But now it's actually pretty fast. It's not as fast as Windows but it is still pretty darn fast. So we chose the Mac OS X part. Here we have our Mountain Lion partition. This time I pressed enter instead of doing dash V because all of that's already taken care of. All we have to do is boot into Mac OS X. We have full 1920 by 1080 resolution here, which results in a smaller Apple logo than you saw earlier. Here we are at the login screen already. So you definitely saw a huge speed improvement in boot times and here we are at the desktop. So everything about this build is 100% complete. You could begin using both Windows 8 and Mac OS X all you want without any issues at all. Bluetooth works, the graphics card is accelerated, audio works, you can see me running some applications right here. They're, they open up just fine in terms of speed and performance. Uh, let's go ahead and click on iTunes, go to the Agree button. Now since I'm not connected to the internet yet because there's no Wi-Fi in this build, as I mentioned in video one, it gave us a little error. So closing out of some of the applications and that pretty much wraps up part nine of the PC build series. In the next video, I will wrap everything up, give you sort of an overview of both operating systems, the hardware itself, as well as some benchmarks. So stay tuned for that.